your safeguard. So that's kind of like the Zalzex Veiled Eye. When you get low enough, it uh, puts on a shield, uh, and we'll have to see if these players are going to be using it. All right. We've talked about the gear. We've talked about these two teams. Now we want to hear what you guys have been saying. Jump in the Twitch chat right now, and you can vote. Who do you think is going to come out on top? Some players that we haven't gotten to see in such a long time on the main stage. The gates are now open. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we wanted to see Hydra, but Hydra's on the bench. Donnie going to be substituting in, playing a peculiar double monk composition with Flynn on that frost mage. Let's see if they can penetrate the defense of Team Bronze Troll. I feel like uh, on paper, Team Bronze Troll right now, they have an advantage. With that Destruction Warlock, they're going to be able to provide a lot of bursts, especially with that Infernal that has been dropped down. When you see the Destruction Warlock use that cooldown, you can expect a big damage. You can already see a Maledix being activated on Flynn. Donnie responds. Will it be enough to keep him going? It seems to be the case for now as Donnie leaves crowd control and immediately retreats to safety. Both Flynn and Donnie trying to hide and duck for cover, but he gets knocked back into line of sight. Beautiful Ring of Peace. Infernion raining down destruction and early ice block forced and team bronze troll get a lead yeah team bronze troll their objective is to just slow down flynn stop him from casting frostbolt stop him from dropping blizzard and not allow him to get those polymorphs off if they can control flynn team's bronze troll will have an excellent advantage in this matchup most certainly donnie still locked down in crowd control great crowd control from team bronze troll throughout this first match this could just be it as flynn tries to get to safety on dangerously low health resus in hot pursuit that temporal shield erasing against the clock will manage to be a race that Flynn can win as Donnie gets to safety and tops him off. But Team Bronze Troll have been in complete domination through game one. Yeah, the only advantage Team's Bronze Troll has right now is the mana advantage. Lotar now uh, into some crowd control. and Infernion getting bursted down for the first time in this game. F2K and friends looking to strike back just a little bit, but Death Zero Warlocks are so tanky, it's going to be difficult for F2K and friends to really penetrate through those defensives. And we see at this point Donnie trading out more defensive cooldowns, but still falling behind as Rezus is just tearing into him, forced to polymorph and retreat back behind the pillar, but we've seen nothing but F2K and friends run away. That's all they've been able to mount. No offense. Just simply try to stay alive. And you're not going to win a game simply by just trying to stay alive. Will they be able to find an opportunity to strike back is the question underneath all of this pressure. Yeah, there's no question about it. Donnie, he's going to have to push in. I, I don't think Flynn needs to be looking for polymorphs in this matchup. They need to rely on that incapacitate that Trilly and Donnie have onto Lontar, and then they can get some burst rolling on Infernion because if Flynn is using his blinks offensively, he's pushing in, looking for the polymorphs, and he gets denied on those. It's just such a huge waste waste of the mobility the Frost Mage has. All right, Rezu is making a preemptive play, activating that Diffuse Magic right before the burst window so that he could just stay aggressive and not fall behind. You can tell that Team Bronze Troll have this matchup nailed down, but in the meantime, crowd control has been secured onto Lontar. Infernion alone here for a moment. Earthen Wall Totem connected, but gets knocked out for a moment. Infernion should start to stabilize. They do manage to get a Polymorph, but Flynn is on the back foot. He's caught in midfield. Donnie locked in crowd control. This could be the second Ice Block first early on. No, Donnie did not and keeps the match going. That ice block, a very important cooldown to hold on to as long as possible. Yeah, so Donnie, he's actually opting to use the Song of Chi G talent in this matchup. So Donnie, he can push in, he can get the incapacitate on Lone Tar, and then use the Song of Chi G to extend that crowd control chain onto Lone Tar and allow them to get a little bit more uptime on Infernion, get some damage out. So it's really going to be up to a Team Bronze Troll. They have to shut down that Chi G, in addition to the Polymorphs coming in from Ooh. Flynn if they want to keep Infernion alive. Beautiful crowd control by Infernion. Spell lock into a full fear, into a capacitator totem, and Team Bronze Troll are making F2K friends look like they're amateurs here in game number one. F2K and friends need to find a way to turn this around because I see absolutely no openings for them. Yeah, they haven't got a, a single defensive cooldown from Team Bronze Troll besides that Earthen Wall Totem, and that really isn't that big of a cooldown to be pulling out. Flynn, once again, he's going to be using the Temporal Shield, trying to mitigate some of this damage. Gets topped off there by Donnie. Double Leg Sweep coming in from Trille, looking for some burst damage on Infernion once again, but... Infernion, he should be completely fine. Flynn just having to play defensive. He's just been running away the entire game, just trying to in, uh, avoid Infernion, which you really can't blame him. Trading with a Destro Warlock isn't necessarily the smartest idea. These Chaos Bolts do huge amounts of damage, and Flynn gets low, but the Life Cocoon once again saves the day. These Ring of Peace placed by Rezus are perfect. They knock back Flynn right into line of sight, Infernion, and he can just nail Chaos Bolts straight to Flynn's face. And every time that happens, we see major defensive cooldowns forced. A couple more opportunities. 
could just be it here and now. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Bronze Troll in complete domination in game one as Donnie is desperate. How much longer can Flynn stay alive? That Maledix is going to soak up a lot of healing. Another spell lock secured by Infernion. He's basically 100% interrupt rate in game one, followed up by a Shadow Fury. Perfect timing into the leg sweep. Amazing crowd control. Maledict connects. Lava Verse are flying in, and Team Bronze Troll are looking like they're going to walk away with this. Flynn hangs on. Donnie rolls away, and somehow, some way, F2K friends, they managed to just stay alive. Well, although Donnie's getting crowd control, Trilly has been spamming out the heals onto Flynn over and over. But while Trilly's doing that, he's not getting any counter pressure. So he's kept the team alive, which is good. But really, F2K and friends, they need to find some sort of offense in this game. Team Bronze Troll in complete control. All right, we can see the touch of death activated for both Windwalker monks. Potential big burst coming in here as they set up a swap to Lone Tar. Are they going to pull off the miracle? Despite being behind the entire game, one opportunity could be it. Lone Tar denies, doesn't crack under the pressure. Now leading the charge for his team, getting a wind shear on Donnie. Infernion trying to make his way over. Flynn manages to get control. Donnie rolls to safety, and Donnie surprisingly has a mana advantage over Lone Tar. If they can somehow keep this going into dampening, it might be a win condition for them. Them. Yeah, we are at 5% dampening right now. I think Lone Tar, his mana should be able to stabilize, especially if he stops with the offensive purges. That's likely what has put him a little bit behind trying to actually end out the game. Flynn now, Cold Snap has just come back up, so he does have another Ice Block available. Choosing not to use it just yet. He wants to use that as soon as possible, unless he's trying to wait another minute and a half for that first Ice Block to come up once again. That's a bit of a risky play, but we'll have to see if it pays off. Now, Team Bronze Troll all rotting down a little bit. Lone Tar able to stabilize. Flynn once again on the back foot, trying to kite away. Like I said, he does not want to be trading damage with Infernian. He's doing his best to just line of sight, get away, and allow um, Trille to have that uptime on Infernion to do most of the damage. Triple set up by Trille, but preemptively activated defense by Lontar denies any sort of damage from Trille. And I think it's important to note that this is the first game of 2019 in the AWC tournament circuit. So these teams might just be getting their feet in the water, trying to get comfortable here in game number one as we move deeper into dampening. Mana now equal on both sides and it's not looking too good for either but the crowd control has been perfect from Team Bronze Troll good follow up as they set up onto Flynn knocking him into line of sight with that ring of peace great combination Flynn blinks to safety well timed temporal will keep him alive for now but another spell lock secured by Infernion Flynn and Donnie in retreat mode once again start to finish but Lone Tar sees the opportunity if you're simply going to run away from the fight I'm going to sit over here and drink which allows Lone Tar to regenerate his mana back to full which he uses for powerful healing spells and since he has full mana now and Donnie is almost out of it, Lontar is going to be able to keep this going, game going a lot longer. Yeah, and Fernion actually moves his gateway. He gateways in looking for the Shadow Fear. He doesn't manage to find it on Donnie. Then getting bursted down a little bit right now as dampening gets higher and higher. Trilly's damage on that Windwalker Monk is going to become more effective onto Infernion, especially if Flynn can do a good job getting away. F2K might find a win condition later on. Infernion getting locked out. He has no gateway. Ice Block going to be forced out onto Flynn, but he managed to hold on. He actually has the Cold Snap back up as well. So two Ice Blocks going to be available for Flynn, or one more after that one fades. Truly really getting swapped to now. Rez is turning his attention onto him, making sure both members of F2K are under fire. Yeah, they've realized that Trille is really the only one that's disrupting the fight and staying in it. So they're going to switch their attention to him and try and find an opportunity there to kill him. But now immediately going back to their main target, Flynn, catching him into a leg sweep as Rezus leads the charge. Flynn retreats once again. I, I, we need a lap counter here, Rich. How many times do you think they've ran around this arena? It feels like maybe 10, maybe 20 at this point. They should maybe join a marathon after this game. Yeah, so that's one of the things about this matchup. If Flynn just stands still, trades out Frostbolt into Infernion, who's casting Chaos Bolt, it's a losing matchup. So Flynn, he has to use the mobility he has on the Frost Mage, use the Blizzard, use, you know, basically his cooldown damage spells like Comet Storm, like the Ice Nova, to burst down Infernion. And then when those aren't available, you don't trade. You run away, you line of sight to avoid as much damage Ooh. as possible. But at this point in dampening, those Frost Mage burst cooldowns, that burst damage does become very effective. Flynn needs to be careful, though. If Infernion can get a whole bunch of Chaos Bolts off here, it's going to be very difficult for Donnie to recover. Flynn went for an aggressive maneuver there and managed to pull an ending resolve. But if you go toe to toe with a Destruction Warlock in midfield and no pillar to line of sight, you don't win that head to head. And Flynn is now forced to retreat away once again. But they've managed to overextend. Lontar and Rezu stack them up and set up for another swap. 
How much damage do they have? Lontar denies with Earthen Wall Totem. That's going to absorb a lot of damage and allow his team to stay in the fight. And that drink that he got earlier has secured him still a significant mana lead. They've got crowd control. Flynn's all alone as he's desperately trying to get out of line of sight of Infernion once again. But Rezus ultimately can take him out if Donnie runs out of mana. Lontar keeps the chain going a bit longer. Flynn's too far away. Donnie's caught in midfield. Flynn has to come back to dispel Hex. Donnie rolls over, but there's an interrupt and he nails it again. Infernion with amazing spell locks throughout this match. They get the final ice block potentially of the match. I don't think we're going to see another one. The defense has finally been cracked. The mana advantage is secured and Team Bronze Troll should be able to walk away with this. Yeah, this is looking very good for them. Deathbolt does come in from Infernion looking for Fear on to Trilla as well, just controlling him, not allowing him to get any damage rolling for F2K. Flynn still just line of sighting, running away. Donnie running on fumes in terms of mana. Full polymorph on Lone Tower, but Flynn is the one that's in trouble. That is the temporal shield. Can he hold on a little bit longer? Rezu's looking to close out the game, and he does at 31% dampening. But Pressure in this game. So many beautiful ring of, uh, rings of pieces here. Uh, con constantly pushing Flynn into the line of sight uh, of Infernion, and Infernion as well. He needs an honorable mention here for those spell locks. Doing a great job uh, actually securing the kill on the back of one of them there. Got Flynn's ice block, and uh, they have a lot of interrupts. It's a comp that's built to outlast, and playing a mage into a lock shaman windwalker is some of the most annoying thing that you can be faced with uh, as a mage. Exactly, and we know this is going to be an uphill battle right now for F2K. It seems like Bronze Troll may have the comp to carry this all the way to a 2-0. Yeah, Team Bronze Troll basically know that Hydra and Flynn are kind of pillars on the team. They're going to be playing Mage and Priest, and this Destruction Warlock Windwalker comp can deal with both of those classes. They have the perfect answer to F2K and friends. So I'm curious to see how they manage to navigate through this match here on what is one of the largest maps in the pool. Are they going to try and bait Lone Tar into center field and set up a swap onto him? Are they just going to run laps like game one? Immediate burst followed up by Team Bronze Troll getting that life cocoon out of the way quite early early on and once again asserting dominance. Yeah, this is a great start. You can see Donnie's actually activated the way of the crane, trying to get some healing out as he was interrupted. Manages to top off his team and will be able to easily with that cooldown, but it does cost a lot of mana. So potentially risking the late game advantage F2K might have. Lone Tar and Infernion taking a little bit of Whoa. but Flynn in the meantime forced into his first ice block. Oh, Lone Tar is having a bit of a difficult time over there with Trill. Trille trying to get some pressure, forcing some major cooldowns from Lone Tar early on if he can keep it up, but it doesn't seem like he can. He's getting feared away with Infernion on backing up Lone Tar. Flynn and Donnie retreating once again as we saw in game one. Rezu's in hot pursuit, but he's left Trille alone. We see a frozen orb. Flynn going crazy with that ring of peace, protecting him from the melee interrupt, getting knocked now by Rezu's. Good response. Lone Tar survives the attack with that earthen wall totem. Trille going to switch to a different target that is not protected by its defense. Smart maneuver by Trille. Trille getting a lot more done here in game one. He's going to really have to put the team in his wheelbarrow for this match if he wants to carry the team. Yeah, he's going to have to put out huge pressure. Flynn assisting him with the burst damage when he has it available, but other than that, just trying to survive. Polymorph spam under Rezus, allowing Trilly uptime onto Infernion, just keeping him away at all costs. If Infernion is casting Chaos Bolts, that is not a winning situation for F2K, so they just need to make sure that Infernion is snared across the map, out of line of sight, but now Infernion doing what I think he should, which is put some pressure out onto Trille. If he can't connect onto Flynn, make sure you're damaging the at least the Windwalker Monk to force Donnie to use some mana. It's such a peculiar situation. It's almost as if the Windwalker Monks are 1v1-ing the Warlock and Mage respectively with healers backing them up and ignoring everything else that's going on in the game. Trille trying to make some curious setups here onto Lone Tar, landing the double. Great positioning here. Donnie activates that wave of the crane as they go for an all-in kill on Lone Tar. They get deflected by Infernion and completely shut down. Yep, Flynn getting Shadow Feared, getting uh, Mortal Coil there by Infernion, shutting down all of that damage, like you said. Double Leg Sweep coming in from Rezus. He sent pressure on to Flynn, but he managed to Nova the uh, Storm Earth and Fire from Rezus. That's going to be present preventing some of the damage incoming. Doni just trading out that life you can. It's a very short cooldown, 55 second cooldown. So as a Mistweaver Monk, you can sort of just trade that out when you think you're going to fall behind in a matchup or when big burst damage is coming to prevent a lot of that uh, incoming pressure. All right, Flynn in midfield, that's not where you want to be. He's forced to use Counterspell on Infernion's Chaos Bolt and deny damage. He was caught in an awkward position, but now that Counterspell threat isn't available for Lone Tar, so Lone Tar can get aggressive here. Crowd Control onto Donnie. Flynn immediately answers with a well-timed Temporal Shield. His Temporal Shields have been the main reason he's able to even stay alive as long as he is. We need to give due credit where it is due, but Flynn once again by himself 
Desperation. Donnie feared away. If Chaos Bolts come flying in here, it could be another ice block forced early on. Flynn's going to duck around the corner. Infernion trying to get line sight, but just can't find the target as both teams begin to stabilize. Still Team Bronze Troll with a significant lead. That's yeah, really actually traded out his touch of karma, so he might be a oh. target. There's a leg sweep. Big damage coming in, but once again, the Life Cocoon saves the day from Donnie. Nicely done. He trades out the Life Cocoon, goes for the cast. He gets interrupted, but the interrupt really doesn't matter because you have that huge shield. So that was a good play from Donnie. Typical Mistweaver maneuver there, just sort of baiting out the interrupt, so now he can basically free cast, but he is in the full fear. Flynn once again to pull shield. Line of sighting, trying to avoid some damage. Surely coming back to help him out a little bit. Rezus having a little bit too much uptime here. Flynn trying to line of sight once again, but Rezus, he's pushing in. He actually trades out the touch of karma as well. You can see Rezus, no trinket, no diffuse magic, no touch of karma. Now this might be an opening that F2K can exploit. Yeah, Donnie immediately ramping it up with a ring of peace out of Lone Tar's line of sight. Lone Tar moves forward to get there. Donnie rolls in. I'm curious they're trying to stack Lone Tar up on the team, but Flynn is still just getting pressured. He doesn't want to have to trade this ice block. Truly goes aggressive, but Flynn can't back him up. That leg sweep goes completely whiffed, and that's going to allow Team Bronze Troll a huge opportunity to strike back here with crowd control secured. Flynn once again alone in the midfield. That Maledict Trinket soaking up a ton of healing. Donnie saves the day, though, with that Life Cocoon, and now Infernion on the back foot as Flynn finally throws some counter pressure his way. Yeah, Flynn's been holding on to that Icy Veins the entire game. Normally we see Frost Majors, they just wait. Keep that as a threat in their back pocket until late into dampening when they can close out the game in just a few globals. So it's so likely Flynn will hold on to that. Infernion has been using his offensive cooldowns at Dark Soul uh, throughout this match, trying to get some pressure rolling. Trilly still just all over Infernion. Infernion really having a difficult time connecting to Flynn in this matchup. He's been doing a good job making sure he's out of line of sight, keeping the snares on Infernion as he tries to waddle across the map. But we see Infernion, this is his moment to try to get some damage rolling with the, uh, the Mortal Coil into Chaos Bolt, spam but Flynn once again blinks out a line of sight. Donnie still under crowd control. Can Rezus force out the second ice block onto Flynn? He's getting low, caught in midfield. And there it is. But Flynn, 33 seconds, he has that cold snap. So that's going to be a third ice block that he has available. They managed to hold on long enough. In I, I almost wonder if Infernion has actually missed a spell lock this game. I was thinking there, Donnie, you have to fake that spell lock. Are you going to be able to do it? Or, uh, nope. Okay, and that's an ice block. So if he can't get through Infernion's spell lock, this is ultimately just going to be Team Bronze Troll's series, inevitably, unless they change it up. Great fear onto the way of the Cranes. This is a well return for Infernion in tournament play here today. Their team looks to be devastating F2K and friends, and it may be a desperation time to pull Hydra in in Game 3 and try and reverse sweep, but as a disciplined priest facing this composition, it looks pretty intimidating. If anyone could do it, it would be Hydra, and we'd like to see him come back, but at this point, F2K and friends, I'm not sure what hope they've got. Yeah, Infernion looking to get aggressive. Drops out his Infernals. A lot of pressure on Flynn. He's caught in midfield with the Mortal Coil. He has the Cold Snapped available. He's holding on to it once again, so... Opting not to trade that out just yet. Hopefully he manages to find that button when he needs it most, when he needs to get into that third ice block. See Rezus chasing him down once again, but Flynn out of line of sight. Rezus with a beautiful ring of peace, once again keeping Flynn in the action. Putting out a lot of pressure with that Storm Earth and Fire. Infernion now, now in line of sight. Flynn getting lower. Cold Snap comes in. Ice Barrier. Is he going to have to trade out the ice block as well? Fear on Donnie. Certainly he will. Flynn playing a little bit greedy there. Manages to find the ice block in the nick of time, but now Donnie almost completely out of mana. This is not looking good for F2K. We, we will want to say that Team Bronze Troll, their team's built around defense and locking the enemy team down and not allowing them to do anything. Team Bronze Troll are simultaneously doing that while completely crushing their opponents offensively with these spell locks into great crowd control chains. And Team Bronze Troll could be a dark horse in the lower bracket for sure. I would not want to go up against them based on their performance in these first two games. F2K and friends potentially have an opportunity here with no gladiators medallions available. They go for desperation. They go after Lone Tar. Will he be able to handle the swap? Maledict, he dispels it. He hangs on. Once again, great defense by Infernium. They go for a double Maledict. Flynn, though, on the back foot, can't stay aggressive. If he tries to, he's going to fall. Rezus gets dispelled. Lone Tar with great offensive play. Even lightning bolting. The bad manner lightning bolts from the Restoration Shaman could maybe cost him his life if he's not <laughs> he's too cheeky here. But Flynn with no ice blocks left. A full fear secured. This should be game two for Team Bronze Troll. Unless Lone Tar throws the game. He's dipping down to about half, but Flynn, it will fall first, and Team Bronze Troll are just dominating. I mean, it's Flynn just time and time again. F2K and friends actually uh, punish Rezus a little bit if he goes behind those pillars, maybe try to uh, have Trilla port on top of him and maybe leg sweep him and drop a uh, frozen orb onto him. 
uh, this is one of those points where you start to ask yourself the question, yes, as far as compositions are concerned, it doesn't seem like... Um, uh, now on the big stage, playing that disciplined priest with his team's back against the wall, can he bring it back and give F2K a fighting chance here? He needs to right now, or we are going to see his squad completely buried under the sands of Tolveron. Team Braun Stroll looking to close it out here with a 3-0 in the lower bracket. It's interesting that Hydra is not running Power Word Solace, instead going for Mind Bender, which might mean a more passive play at the pillar game. And we have to see if he can out dampen the Destruction Warlock, which teams have done in the past, but it can take quite a lot of dampening to potentially pull it off. And with the aggression that Team Bronze Troll have had and look to set up here and now, I'm not sure if they can last that long, Ven. Yeah, one of the scary things about the Discipline Priest is, you know, Flynn taking a little bit of damage in the meantime, but one of the scary things about the Discipline Priest is when Flynn is trying to cross the map, if he moves from one of these pillars to another, Hydra will get caught in midfield, doesn't have the same sort of mobility as the Mistweaver Monk. You can see Hydra now crossing preemptively, might use the life grip on a Flynn, and now they are in a much better position. So this is what's going to have to happen. Hydra's going to have to make that leap first and potentially help out Flynn with that leap of faith uh, talent and the feathers to use that mobility. But if Hydra gets caught in the midfield, there's actually an opportunity for Team Bronze Troll to swap to him, unlike the Misweaver Monk. Yeah, they do gain some extra crowd control, bringing in that Disciplined Priest, which actually managed to get a defensive cooldown, at least from Infernion, which is a lot more than they've got for basically the entire series. But now Infernion still low health, the pressure a lot higher with Hydra in the arena. Is he gonna be the X factor in bringing his team back in what would have to be a reverse sweep, a 3-0? Can Hydra pull that off? Three wins in a row for his team against such a devastating composition. Another double leg sweep, though, as Rezus looks to set up. Infernion follows it up, gets incapacitated by Trilly. Good shutdown by Trilly. Yeah, Hydra Flynn, line of sighting right now. Rezus still trying to generate some pressure. Finally, Infernion in a position where he can find some damage. Trying to look for a Chaos Bolt. Flynn needs to get out of line of sight once again. Earthen Shield Totem gets dropped out by Lontar. Infernion's going to be very tanky. Basically a turret in this spot where he's not going to be able to be taken down, but he can de deal a lot of damage. So F2K and friends, they need to reposition. Nice ring of peace coming in from Trille, preventing Infernion from staying on target. Ooh, good double crowd control here by F2K and friends. The mind control on Rezus. Infernion completely alone and getting destroyed right now by Trille. Lontar forced to use that Spear Link Totem. That's the first time he's had to use that in the entire series. I would say that this sub in is starting to pay out here for F2K and friends. They may have wanted Hydra the entire series if they can keep this up. Yeah, nicely done by Hydra. Pushes in for the Fear, gets the Trinket from Infernion. He has no wall, so Infernion is actually very vulnerable in the situation. Flynn gets gripped away once again. The Light Sweep coming in from Rezus. Good damage. Hydra able to spam out the heals with the Shadow Men's. It's one of the things about the Discipline Priest as well, is you have multiple schools of healing. So if you get interrupted on Penance, you can use the Shadow Men. He's not as vulnerable to the lockouts coming in from Infernion. Yeah, Infernion's offense will be kind of shaved away a bit with that Discipline Priest swap up. The disadvantage you get is that mana bar, but they're ultimately even on mana. They're a lot more evenly matched in general between these two compositions. Infernion posted up here in midfield, trying to get some devastation going here with crowd control on both Hydra and Flynn. Flynn needs to get around that corner as soon as possible. Chaos Bolts are flying in. One connects. Flynn stays afloat for now. Rez is getting Nova behind the pillar. Actually uses Diffuse Magic to dispel Frost Nova. He's been using that defensive cooldown aggressively to stay on target. An interesting maneuver from the Windwalker Monk, but one that could be punished moving forward. Yeah, Rezus, as well as Trilly, they're not going to be too vulnerable in this matchup, so I like that they're using the Diffuse Magic offensively. Like Zico was kind of saying, it is up to Rezus to generate as much pressure as possible, especially when Infernion, he's just out of line of sight, just getting disabled, rooted from Trilly over and over. Hydra now caught into the stun. Beautiful. Lontar and Hydra's mana, relatively even. Fear coming out, but I think it actually did get tremored there, so nicely done by Lontar. Infernion getting a little low, but gets topped off. In the meantime, Flynn taking quite a bit of damage in line of sight with the Temporal Shield. Should get topped off, but uh, Hydra really falling behind at this point in the game. Yeah, they stacked on top of each other. Both Hydra and Flynn were just getting destroyed by Rezus as they stood in that Fist of Fury. Touch of Death activated by Rezus. He's trying to lead the charge for his team. Potentially huge burst here onto Flynn. It could be an ice block and it will be immediately traded out. Hydra trying to get aggressive feathering towards Lontar. Looking for a Psychic Scream. He preemptively errs in walls. Good read by Lontar. That defense will protect Infernion. And now Infernion's defensives have rotated. Team Bronze Troll, it's the time to attack. They've got Fear and Crowd Control on the other entire Higher team, Flynn, potentially still in hypothermia and unable to use Ice Block. Can Hydra keep this going? 
Activates Rapture, powerful power with shields flying in. Flynn ducking for cover, trying to escape, but that Maledix Chaos Bolt combo could be devastating. Flynn manages to blink to safety with some clutch polymorphs and stays alive. Yeah, and Fernion using the gateway, still playing aggressive in this matchup. Flynn, no blinks available, has to hold on a little bit longer. If he gets Ring of Peace back in line of sight, could be devastating for Flynn in this matchup. Hydra gets interrupted, taking a little bit of cleave from the Fist of Fury coming in from Rezus. Flynn and Hydra, they cannot be stacking up, or the Windwalker Monk will be able to tear through their defensives. Icy Banes gets used by Flynn, but he's getting low. Second Ice Block going to be traded out in the matchup, and Dampening has just kicked Ooh. in. Lontar cancels it and goes aggressive. Lontar trinkets, but Flynn is still on the back foot from that aggressive Ice Block cancel. Can Hydra keep him up? He gets spell locked, and Fernion looking to shut this match out. Hydra ducks around the corner there with that pillar on the wall. Great positioning by Hydra to avoid crowd control, but Infernion pushes up. Hydra can't dodge it. Fear incoming. Flynn denies the fear to desperately stay alive. Will he be able to get out of line of sight? The barrier. I think he's like one inch out of that barrier. Flynn desperately needs that defense, but looks like he's going to survive regardless. Rezu's defensively psychic screamed away. Infernion with not much defense left. Neither is Flynn. There's no mana left. Dampening has just started. It's still anyone's match. Yeah, incapacitate over onto Hydra. Flynn still getting low. No ice block for quite some time. And I think with the mana situation for both of these healers, it's unlikely Flynn's going to be able to last another four minutes. Interrupt on Hydra. Another double stun coming in. Rezus really punishing the positioning from Hydra and Flynn as they are stacked up. Infernion right on top of them. Trill got feared away, and Infernion was able to chase. Double Mortal Coil coming in. Infernion gets kicked on the Chaos Bolt. Nicely done by Trilla. Still, Flynn and Hydra, they managed to hold on. You can see Hydra crossing the map once again. Flynn has been kind of left behind, but he's not in too much danger right now as long as he can line of sight Infernion. Hydra's positioning great on this map. He's very far away, so he can use Life Grip to allow Flynn to escape to safety. That Infernal's going to come crashing down, and Infernion is going to start to ramp up insane Chaos Bolt damage here. If they can't deny the Chaos Bolt, if they stop one, he's looking for some fake cast. They duck for cover. All three members potentially need to retreat. Infernion gets an offensive gateway into the enemy team to get right on top of them. He wants to close this out. Shadow Fury nailed, but not able to get in the line of sight. Frozen Orb is slowing down the assault. Infernion needs to get some Chaos Bolts. Doesn't manage to get it. Gets denied by Trilly's Ring of Peace. Great denials onto Infernion by the entire team of F2K, but inevitably it may not matter here as Hydra has no mana left to keep this fight going. He's pulling penance after penance out of his pocket to keep this fight going, but that life grip will allow Flynn to get to safety for now, but a Chaos Bolt is chasing him. Temporal Shield will bounce him back. Lone Tar is in desperation with mana. Really, right now, I'd love to see a swap to Rezus behind the pillar potentially, but at this point, they're just not going for it. They keep going after Infernion, but they're fighting an uphill battle. Yeah, there's no question about it. I really want to see uh, Rezus put some pressure on Hydra if he can in this matchup. Good. He's getting the double cleave out right now. I think Hydra is a good target, especially when he's completely oom. They just need to make sure he stays oom. So if Rezus is having a difficult time staying on Flynn, I think they can swap around a little bit at this point in the game. We are at 16% oh. happening. Full sheep on Lone Tar. He actually trinkets out in Infernion, very vulnerable. DR Sheep coming in onto Lone Tar as well. The Earthen Shield Totem should be enough to keep Infernion alive. Knocked but a out. nice ring of peace from Trille. Double Coil coming in. Infernion doing everything he can to survive in this situation. Hydra getting low. He's locked out, caught in midfield. Chaos Bolts can be cast out, gets interrupted. Hydra. Very nicely done. And here's the swap onto Hydra. Rezu's trying to keep him in line of sight with that ring of peace, but Hydra manages to escape for a second. Lone Tar trying to get on top of Hydra as well, potentially for his team to get aggressive, but he left Infernion behind. It's Infernion versus Flynn in midfield. Who will fall? first Hydra or Infernion. Neither team has mana, but Hydra gets the double fear. Infernion all alone in center field and potentially able to clutch this game out. Touch of Death is about to tick and could be the final countdown. Spirit Link saves him, but Rezus is not inside. It may not be enough. Infernion barely hanging on. Hydra hanging on barely as well. How much longer can they keep it going? Polymorph secured. Hydra, this could be a two on two here very shortly as Hydra gets interrupted. Rezus looks like he's going to be able to secure the kill, but gets denied by a ring of peace. Hydra barely hangs on. Infernion barely hangs on. Hydra's going to duck around the corner. Infernion does not have that same luxury, but Earthen Wall Totem should be enough. The Eponine stacked up. Common Storm comes in. Hydra might just pull off a miracle. Yeah, Hydra managing to survive, but the thing is, once they get off of Flynn, he's able to put out all this pressure, land the Polymorphs, get the Frostbolt damage that he needs, and if Frost Mages can free cast, their damage potential goes up by quite a bit. Hydra now caught into the leg sweep, taking still a decent amount of damage by Rezus, who's really oh, close the double. this game. Nice double interrupt. Lone Tar's there as well. Gets caught in line of sight. Lone Tar looking to close out the game with the Trinket, and uh, unluckily for Hydra, he does get taken down. That was very nice offensive push coming in from Rezus. Uh, that, that was fantastic. Oh, 
still right? playing it out. Yeah, and, and I think it's pretty clear why they would. It pressure still very much on Infernion. Hopefully that totem going to be able to keep him up in the case of Lone Tar. But when we do look at this final game in the series, if you're going to have a 3-0 coming out like that for F2K, definitely going to be impressive. We see what they are able to do as we finally do see Flynn go down. That is going to close the book on that one. And at the end, this was by far the best match in the series. I think that they should have brought up Hydra in the start. Could have been a different series. Yeah, it definitely did look solved, right? Everybody thinks that there is going to be that right answer. We're going to figure out what the best plays are throughout this entirety of the tournament. Now, as you may notice, we are in the lower portion of the bracket, so we do see Bronze Troll move on. F2K, we're going to have to see you a little bit later because no longer 